Earlier this year, Fujifilm announced their flagship high-speed X-Series camera, the X-H2S. With its 26 megapixel sensor, 6K video recording, high-speed continuous shooting. But at the same time, Fujifilm also announced the development of a new high-resolution sensor, which today I'm pleased to say is found inside of this, the brand new Fujifilm X-H2. Featuring that new 40 megapixel sensor, internal 8K video recording, up to 20 frames per second continuous shooting with shake-free stabilization, could this be the perfect camera for the next generation of hybrid shooter? weighing in a respectable 660 grams when both the battery and memory cards are installed, the X-H2 shares its flagship position alongside its sibling, the X-H2S. Inside we find that headline feature, the brand new 40.2 megapixel X-Trans5 stacked backside illuminated APS-C sensor, which is partnered with the latest X-Processor 5 and this combination really is the backbone to the camera's performance. Being 40 megapixels, it actually makes the X-H2 the world's first crop-sensored camera to house this large megapixel range, which I'm sure will appeal to many users. The X-H2 obviously has the same layout as the X-H2S, but both are familiar when in your hands, with well-positioned, easy-to-reach dials and buttons, along with a decent-sized grip and a top LCD panel. You can choose from shooting with the fully articulating LCD screen or the 5.76 million dot OLED viewfinder that was super bright and clear to look through throughout the day. We wanted to test the X-H2 in a slightly different environment, so we headed to Popham Airfield to meet with a good friend of mine. This is James Ketchell serial adventurer who's climbed Everest, rode the Atlantic solo, cycled 18,000 miles around the world, along with gyrocoptering around it too. Catch. Good to see you, my man. It's been you. a long time. I promised I'd take you flying. <laughs> I'm really looking yeah. forward to this today. It's going to be proper awesome. Yeah, it will be. It'll be fun. It'll um, be real fun. I mean, I've seen you fly in these, obviously. I have no idea about them. To me, they don't look the most stable thing in the world. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, they have all different names. Yeah. Um, it's very stable. So this is a gyro plane, and to the untrained eye, I suppose it looks a bit like a helicopter because you've got the rotors above your head. Yeah. But they're not actually powered. They spin via the air passing underneath them. It's called auto-rotation. Right. So once that rotor spins up, uh, it's basically our wing, and we can turn the aircraft, go left and right. You'll see the whole rotor head yeah. move. And actually, the most important thing on this aircraft is our whole rotor system and our control uh, rods. The engine, if it goes bang, it's not the end of the world. We can land somewhere. Hopefully not today, though. No, no, that won't happen. Uh, I describe this as like a flying motorbike. And okay. I think, for me, I think that's the best way to describe this. It's a lot of fun, and you're about to find out anyway. Yeah, definitely. How, <laughs> how high do you reckon we're going to be flying roughly today? You know what? Today we'll keep it fairly low. We'll probably only fly 1,500 feet, okay. uh, 1,500 feet above the ground. So we've got some cameras to test, and we're going to have some yep. fun, right? Yeah, definitely. It's also worth mentioning that we have been given the brand new XF 56mm f1.2 today, which has an equivalent 35mm focal length of 85mm. And from an initial first look, it's optically really rather impressive, but we'll touch on that a bit more later on. As previously mentioned, you can capture rich, high quality 40.2 megapixel stills in both JPEG and RAW. Fujifilm's fan favourite film simulations are available once again, letting you easily grade your images in body and reduce your post-processing workflow. Continuous burst shooting is available up to 15 frames per second in full resolution when using the mechanical shutter, or up to 20 frames per second if using the electronic. This makes the X-H2 a great all-round camera, but also for sports and fast-moving subjects, and with that fifth-generation tech inside, the buffer just keeps going and going. The X-H1 was the first X-Series camera to adopt in-body image stabilisation, and within the X-H2, you can now compensate for up to seven stops, which is really essential when shooting handheld video or with telephoto lenses. 
This is essential for days when you want to keep your backpack light and reduce your load by not taking out a tripod or gimbal into the field. Now, although the results aren't the smoothest ever seen, considering I'm bouncing around, vibrating from the engine, and the camera keeps being knocked by gusts of wind, the X-H2 did far better than I could have imagined. The internal improvement sees a new autofocus system with an adaptive AI technology, so you will be able to lock onto your subjects with confidence, whether you're capturing vehicles, animals, birds, or even people. Fujifilm's motion capture has once again evolved since the X-H2S. You can now shoot high resolution content up to 8K at 30p internally at 422 10-bit in Apple Pro Res. You can also step down to 4K at 60p, or if you're looking for something a little slower, you can capture 240p in Full HD. For most, shooting in 8K seems a little excessive, but remember back to when cameras started to include 4K recording and how that has now pretty much become an industry standard. I am fortunate in that my PC allows for 8K playback, but in reality I only output 4K videos at this time. There are a few places where the higher resolution footage can be really helpful though. If you are looking to crop your footage more in post, where you can see this original 8K shot, followed by its 4K crop, you still have loads of detail letting you get creative in your post-production. You can also extract a still image from the 8K footage, which works out to be roughly 33 megapixels in size, ideal for reasonably sized prints, and means you'll never miss that vital moment. The other benefit when shooting in high resolution is the detail that's actually captured, especially when outputting in a lower resolution. You can however do this all in camera when shooting in 4K high quality, as this samples the whole 8K sensor and saves its output as 4K up to 30p. In 6.2K the X-H2 uses the sensor's full 3x2 aspect ratio, leaving you with many options for post-processing, whether you wish to reframe, crop, or just output at a 16x9. You will need a CF Express card to unlock these higher data captures, but the internal video recording is really rather impressive. You can also hook the X-H2 up to an external recorder via the full-size HDMI and shoot in ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW. The latest F-Log 2 allows for up to 13 plus stops of dynamic range, giving you greater flexibility in your workflow when recovering shadows and highlights and colour grading in post. Much like the X-H2S, you have the optional external fan accessory, perfect for helping to keep your camera cool when recording for a prolonged period of time, or capturing in those processor-hungry resolutions, and it simply screws into the back of the body and links via the contact pins. Powering the X-H2 is the same NPW23 battery that's found inside of the GFX large format cameras, the X-H2S, and also the X-T4. The battery is rated for up to 680 shots, or 70 minutes when recording in 8K video, and this can be topped up via the USB-C port found on the side. The X-H2 is the first X-Series camera to adopt a pixel shift multi-shot mode, which can deliver 160 megapixel images, giving the ultimate quality when detail really matters. This works by capturing 20 frames, shifting the sensor by half pixel increments between each of those frames, and then automatically combining them into one single raw file. This is perfect for landscape, architectural, and product-based imagery. I'd best also give a quick shout out to the brand new XF 56mm f1.2 RWR lens that I've been using throughout this video. Every aspect of this lens has been designed to deliver images with exceptional clarity and detail. Comprised with a spherical and ED elements, which help to minimize chromatic aberration, the close focus is now reduced to 50 centimeters and also sees no effect to the overall image quality. Being an 85mm prime in a 35mm equivalent focal length makes it an ideal portrait lens with a stunning depth of field and beautiful bokeh. Sharing the mantle with the X-H2S is Fujifilm's flagship X-Series cameras. The X-H2 brings a high-resolution sensor to a small and lightweight APS-C camera. 
providing not only 40 megapixel stills, but also 8K video, that 160 megapixel pixel shift mode, along with fast and accurate focusing and a brilliant in-body image stabilization. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe, ring that bell to get notifications of all our latest content and if you'd like any more information please check out the link below or pop into your local London Camera Exchange.